short video on using a CNC mill to turn up precision parts. Just been on a bit of a journey doing that in the last couple of days and I wondered initially whether it would be accurate enough or whether it could run automatically, whether the swarf or the chips would tangle up and cause problems and um, found out that both of those issues are non-issues with the correct approach. Um, with the right chip breaker on the tool, and I'll show it running again in a minute, but this is a high-speed steel tool that I've ground up with a little top rake scallop ground into it that allows the chips, or forces the chips to, to break into little pieces. Um, that gets around the automatic running swarf control side of things. Accuracy is very good. I found that the, the parts I've made so far have the repeatability of, um, if we put it in Imperial to suit most of you, uh, about a quarter of a thou on the diameter is being retained and that is um, pretty good. I mean it's for a press fit situation so I need to control the dimensions accurately and um, that is that is working really well. I've mounted a small special three jaw onto a back plate I've made up with an R8 shank and just used a R8 cutter holder and a screw cutter steel disc as a back plate. So this operation is doing some diameter turning, mainly facing, and generating some chamfers and then moving over to the second station and putting a little spherical hole in the end. The beauty about using the mill for turning is that you could have many, many different tools. It's a big table. Effectively, you could have it set up with a gang plate of tools and have 10 or 20 different tools. So potential is really good. Okay, well let's run apart. Just installed one of the blanks into the reverse three jaw. I've machined out a special step that is to suit this part. And um, the three jaw floats on the back plate so I can clock the part or dial indicator the part perfectly true and that will repeat because all the diameters are the same. So let's close the enclosure down and switch the machine on. So the first few passes are just running in fresh air because I may have some blanks that are longer and um, if I just saw them off, the ends of bars and so on. So there's a few passes that it's not actually doing any cutting. The beauty of CNC is it's, if you can get it to run automatically, it doesn't really matter how long the cycle time is because you can go away and do something else while it's running. And so I've got it set very conservatively. You can see the feed rate is quite fast and that's in order to get the chip breaking. In a second you'll see it start to cut and I'll drop down low and you can see because it's a high feed rate and there's a scallop in the top rake the next, the next cut it'll show more because the depth of cut will be greater and the swarf or the chips are coming off into little pieces and that's what you need for production work you, you can't have it coming off in a great long thread this is just a finishing pass so you you can't avoid it in that situation because you've got a very light cut. But there's only a thin thread of material from that one cut. Which is sort of tolerable, the build-up isn't too bad from one cut. But now we're back into roughing again and you can see the chips are coming off in small pieces, like a milling cutter chips. I've just ground a scallop in the top of the high-speed steel tool bit. It's actually not too easy to get that right. If the scallop 
isn't quite the right geometry, it doesn't work so well. So another option is that you may be able to buy um, a chip breaking aluminium uh, carbide tool which already has that geometry in it. I'm not sure if they're available or not or how well they work, but I've just successfully ground this high speed steel up to do the job um, and so I'm happy with that. It's taking half a millimetre deep cuts and quite a fast speed rate of uh, 300 millimetres a minute on the roughing. I've got the coolant running on it to uh, give a good surface finish because that's the other critical thing with this product. It needs to be visually very good. I've now got a feed rate of 90 millimetres a minute for the final pass and that is building up a thread of swarf which is very fine and, and not actually causing a big problem from the amount of build up from that one cut. Now finishing the diameter that's the accurate press fit portion and it's oh you can see the swarf got the build up there now generating a little chamfer coming in clearance clearance of the face and the final generation of OD chamfer now we're going to jump over to another cutter which is just set up in a random position and um, set with a dial indicator and the tool path comes down over there to produce the little cutout in the center. Ready for the next part. My background is in traditional tool making and my um, expertise in the area of CAM generating the CAM program is probably not particularly high and so this is the area where I struggle the most. I've, I've only got uh, milling software for CAM and so I've just produced a profile with the XY, an XY profile generated a toolpath with that and then um, changed the Y axis to a, a Z axis by doing the um, text editor replace, you know, find Y and replace with Z. There's a few other little tweaks you have to make, changing G27 to G28 or something, and J to K, and a few little edits you've got to do. Um, but you can find out by trial and error and run it in the air and um, make sure it's basically okay and then run it with a part with greatly reduced speed um, so it's fairly safe and you can get there uh, admittedly took me a few goes to get it right but I've got there in the end and, and that is the area where I'm most weak so really this video is about some of the more mechanical um, tips that I can add I've learned a lot from YouTube videos and so it's nice to be able to put something back. So I guess my main contribution here is about chip breaking because you need to have the swarf coming off in a broken form like a, uh, like a cutter so it can run automatically. The whole point of CNC is so it can run automatically. And the, I'll show you later on about the uh, mounting the little three-jaw onto the R8 shank and how to set it perfectly true if I get a chance. On the subject of power and safe RPM, the Tourmark CNC is quite a light machine. The 1100 has just got a light motor driving it and a light spindle so there's obviously a limit to how big a chuck you can have and how big a cut you can take, especially if you're machining steel. So I've, um, I think one thing you can notice to make sure it's always in the low speed range, so that's a maximum RPM of 2000 RPM. That's a good safety precaution. You wouldn't want a big chuck in there running at 5000 RPM. It just w might just be a bit much of a strain on the spindle. I've got a backplate size that will take 
the small chuck that's in there now, and it's an 80 millimeter, and also it'll take these bigger chucks, a uh, 100 millimeter and a 125 millimeter, and I think that's about as big as I want to go. That's a five inch chuck. Um, and at 2,000 RPM, you wouldn't want to be going any quicker than that. There's quite a bit of power. If you've got a free cutting tool, I'll, I'll show you the amp meter running in a minute when it's taking a roughing cut. I noticed when I got the chip braking working correctly, the um, amp meter showed a lot less load on the motor. So, we'll zero in on that now. Okay, we're going to come up to a roughing cut in a minute. I don't know if you can see the needle there, but it's actually only drawing a small amount of amps. You see it's just lifting up there a few percent. So that gives me confidence in this setup for machining steel. Let's say 60 millimeter diameter part. I'm pretty confident I could machine steel even to a bigger diameter with light cuts. It's certainly got the rigidity and the power for this sort of work, which is very pleasing. It means it's worth doing the effort to set your CNC up as a lathe. 